Hello everyone and welcome to a smash look at Cradle. For as you as always, and this is from Flying Cage for Semi Animals. What a name, what a name. Anyway guys, what is Cradle? It is a sci-fi first person questing uh, adventure where you'll be doing puzzles, exploring the beautiful landscape and geez, this game does look freaking incredible. Trust me, and there's so, so much more. Anyway, the main aim, I'll just point out, is you're pretty much fixing, tasked, tasked with the task of fixing your companion's mechanical body and finding out the myster mystery of the world that's going on. Anyway, we'll be heading in. Um, I have not played anymore. I don't know whether to start as a new game or resume for where I was because um, I know what I'm doing. There's one thing to kind of point out about this game is it doesn't really give you any help. Even with the helpful tips it gives you, it doesn't really give you. So that's why I'm tempted to go with a new game, just so you can see what's going on. Um, but there is a lot of sort of chat involved and, and whatnot. Anyway, I've, I'd, actually, I'm just going to go a new game just now. We'll just say, yes, game reset, continue. Would you like a tutorial? No, I know what I'm doing, kind of. But like I said, the game doesn't really give you much help in the sense. It just tells you, like, find this thing. It's like, right, so what area am I going to find it in? Where am I going to do? What's it going to do? What's it? It doesn't really give you any sort of clues. Um, the idea of anyone who's starting out this game is probably the best to assume everything is within your little hut. You have a little hut, uh, you're, or more like a big massive tent. But uh, mostly everything you need for the initial sort of few things you've got to do are within that area. And then of course you'll start to explore and the game looks f so so good. Anyway, this is our protagonist now waking up from a very sleepy days. Um, you press some buttons and then woke up here. Not much is explained per se. I mean, you are kind of left to work it out. But hey, some people actually love games like this. I mean, I've been certainly enjoying myself so far. The game looks really, really good. And pretty much everything is almost interactable, which is kind of cool. I will actually say I have turned down my graphic settings ever so slightly because this game actually can tank some resistance because it looks super fantastic once you actually up it. Anyway, um, you have a basic icons like this can be moved, that's an icon for moving, this is the icon for reading. So, didn't say goodbye to Ongos, I waited for him all day, but he did return, please feed him. And then, so, right, so we got a heat red pot. So, like I said, everything is openable. I can even grab these if I want to. And... I think it's this is locked. There's also a like sort of iPad-y like or tablet thing over here. Um, you can't access that. You actually get a code later on. Anyway, like I said, you can hit tab and it's gonna bring up right. So put the red pot in the furnace. You're like right, red pot. I actually thought it was this at first. I was like, really, it has some red on it, right? Left click allows you to pick up and drop. Right click allows you to throw. Thankfully, that doesn't break in case I need it later on. But you're probably like, looking and it's like, wait, what's what's going where? There's also a fork. And this little companion is what, the one you're actually looking to fix. I um, you can activate her just now, but there's some things you actually need to function. And we'll just kind of collapse. And uh, there's some other things that like you collect flowers and even digitize stuff. Um, anyway, I know where the red plate is. It, I don't know, was it? Uh, I need that eventually, I think. So I'm just going to put it in here. Um, the red plate is in here. There we go. And bump. So what's next? A new task. Add, add a glass of water. And you're grabbing this cup. And bringing it over here. I'll just put that down. Put it down. No. Okay. Run the water. Grab the cup. Grab the cup. Fill with some water. There we go. And done. I'm going to put, put that off. There's nothing to sort of place down. Like, if I grab this, it doesn't, like, allow you to just place on the counter. Um, something like that might be a bit more useful rather than flinging stuff around, right? So what's our next task? Heat the furnace. So we've got to put on this. I know where everything kind of is for this, so it'll be a bit quicker. If any of you guys are watching this for the first time and wondering how to do it, then, of course, you have a little guide. We'll put some pieces of wood. And put another piece of wood. There we go. Yep. We need uh, some matches. Which is this guy. There we go. Close up. Now we have some boiling water. The effects are really quite nice. 
And you'll see what's outside this door soon, by the way. Don't you worry. Uh, what's the next? Uh, add two cup plums of fruits. Right, so we have to go outside. You ready? Ready for this game? Oh, so good. It's actually the, ma the main area that looks really kind of cool is round here. I'm actually going to run up here just now so you guys can just see. Also, the music is incredible. Anyway, I'll just get, run myself up here. Just look at that. It is insanely awesome. Anyway, I know we're to actually get fruits in. It's that the tree is near the river. Um, but the other thing is, like I said, like it says, will grow near the nearby lake, right? Okay, so... By product elimination, you're going to assume it's in a tree or something in the ground. There's other things, though, that's just like, like I said, that was just like, place the red, you know, the red pot on the stove. It's like, well, where's the red pot? The red stock pot in the cupboard? And some people might like that, and some people might not, because I was stuck for a good 10 minutes, like, oh, where, what is going on? And then you kind of eventually figure it out. So you, you will need your thinking cap on for this, guys. Please keep that in mind. I'd like to just quickly bring up the settings that I've actually managed to forget. So you get quality, I've got set to 6, it goes all the way it's up to 10, you get full screen, vertical synchronization, textures, anti-aliasing, gamma as well as sound and music volume and a bunch of other good stuff. So there is a good bunch in there if you need it. And look at this water, it's really nice. Anyway, so we have the trees up here. We need this. We need something to get it because you can't actually grab it. And you don't just fall from the tree. You can't shake the tree. Um, there was a stick around here. There we go. Nope, that's too big. We need to find a stick. There's a stick. And use the stick to get the fruit. Nope, I forgot to right click. Give me the stick. Fruit. Give me the fruit. Now for infantry. Infantry. Inventory. And you just press E and it puts it in there. You want to bring it up, press E again, and then you can see your selected items, and you can, you know, pull that out if you want. Uh, where did that stick go? There we go. And... I really need to stop doing that. There's just so much ambience to the actual game as well. Like, you have the birds chirping, you have other creatures. There's some things that, like, make sound, you're just like, what was that? Which leads me to believe, you know, there's going to be something happening in the game. Like I said, this is a first impression, though, of what you're seeing. The initial game, what's showing. Uh, the sky looked like... The thing is, I find like this all looks cool. And the sky seemed a bit of an odd choice. But it seems to work with the way, you know, the sun beams down. It seems to work for the way it is. Like I said, it is a bit of an odd choice, but oh well. Anyway, let's get in here. Adio. So we need to cut up the fruit though. So we're just going to yep, not put it there. Put it there. I can stay there and this one can go there. And then we need to find a knife which was in this drawer. Give me the knife. Give me the knife. And cut that up. Or not. So we'll take this, and then you come in over here to put the food in. Now it seems really simple right now, um, but there is a part in the game where you start to get some quests, like uh, uh, things to actually do, like um, once it's cooked actually. You actually do get some pretty intense puzzles I might add. The first one is like, kind of the same, but it doesn't really explain itself per se. Right, so we have to add a dried root. Now the dried root is out here hanging here. Give me. Give me. There we go. So we get some dried root, bring it in, and put it here. Then we have to prepare the breakfast song, add dried root, use the mortar. So the mortar is this guy. But it doesn't tell you when there's no indication when you pick it up, like what this is going to do. That's the only problem. So we then do this and put that in there. And then we grab this little guy. Da, 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 da. There we go. And put that down. Grab this and pop. 
So we'd like a, an indication to kind of put an item down. And what's our next task? Add salt. Now the salt is one of these. I know which one, but try working out which one it is. While you're watching this video, try and work out which one it is. There's no indication, like nothing comes up like this is such and such, this and such and such. But you just kind of have to trial and error. But you look for one that eventually turns the water to yellow. Yellow orange, should I say. Right, so if we put that back there. So this is now all cooked. Now we're going to go out here. And pop it here. I just know what to do, but like I said, it's it's kind of like a trial and error thing. Anyway, we have a massive eagle falcon type fella coming down. Whee! How cool is that? Like, it is an initial, like, little bits of the game that kind of just hook you and you're just like, okay. Music and the way the world looks and just, you know, a giant eagle with a chest plate. You have to undo, actually, at one point. Once he has a big helpful scooping of his food. Alright, next up. We have to take his class off. Hello. Game saved. Replace his chest plate. Okay, so we have to take these off. Hey, don't move. Stop moving. Thank you. Also, this is funky. You get this explained later on why this is like this. Also, the music just changed. Where did that actually go? It's out there. And we need a new one, which is right here. Here you go. Where's that... can't be used. Where did that one go? Oh. Put it here for some reason. I must have been hitting the left mouse button by accident. There we go. It's all set. All tasseled to him. And away he goes. He's Oski. Find an application for the number. Um, so there is a number on this which is 2053. Which I did kind of work out, it's like, right, there's something going to be needing a pin code, something electronic. So you eventually find this out. Yes, I would like to read the entries. 2053. There you go. There is a lot of reading in this. Um, I'm probably not going to read it all. Um, if you want to pause the video to kind of read through what it actually says. It's basically introducing what kind of went on. Because uh, it is set a few years in the future. Sort of when your character wakes up, but you don't really have any recollection of how things happened. Um, so, you know, you can click continue and you, you get a wee story of what's going on. You know, it tells you about I collect and digitized flowers, you know, I look for the prettiest ones, so it speaks to that. You know, when the wind picks up, you know, you're going to need shelter. It kind of, it almost explains itself slightly, but giving you enough to kind of work on, enough to go with, if you wish. And that's us. So then we get another task. I don't like this cup being on the floor. Go there. So, find your toy. Your child stash is hidden somewhere nearby. Come out of your yacht, fly straight as a kilo on a rock with a snag. Look for an arrow, a sorrowful tree. So you get almost riddles. So, you're going to have to find. Because it actually has a sort of processing brain part of the the android anyways so this actually comes down here and it's got an arrow there i'm gonna follow the arrow fruit till you come to is it about here i think no it's what it's it's uh, this one actually another arrow and it's pointing down here where you've put your little character character toy Although it is a little cat, it's kind of amusing. Maybe let's get this dug up. Because you got this guy. You can't take it with you, annoyingly. I did not just break that. A little case, the same one as the poster. Anyway, we take this back and then we'll be fitting it into the Android. But then you've got to do a few other things. It's not quite over, don't you worry. But the initial part of the game is setting up the Android. But then you get tasked with actually doing a puzzle. So what I'll do is I'll show you the Android sort of activate and then I will hopefully skip forward 
a little bit so you can see the puzzle. Um, gotta take her head off. Seems a bit barbaric, but oh wait, no. So we take this one out, and we don't actually need that anymore. So. Things make noises, and I don't know what they are. Oh look! I actually didn't notice that before, and I wonder who's actually flying around in it. Hmm. So there is a transport system of some sort. I'm gonna put the head back on. So there's bits and bobs lying around, and you know people would like the Fallout and everything. Our games with a lot of reading to like delve into the lore are gonna like this. Anyway, we do we have find and connect the synchronizer, which is this bit, and lo and behold, it's these. Give. There we go. Where did I put the body part? Where did it, where did I actually put it? I could switch that on, but where is it? I lost it. How did I lose it? Oh well. Anyway, let's uh, just activate. So let's eventually activate. I love how there's like this like, wires going into everywhere, things plugged up. Can I take these pillows? No. I might want to put that on the table, just in case it's needed. So wood. Where did I put that darn thing? Oh well. Anyway, she is alive now, so we can talk to her. Hi. And this you catch her does actually have a voice. Hey. Can you hear me? Where am I? Somewhere in Mongolia, in some yurt. What happened to you? I don't know. I don't remember anything either. Was it you who switched me on? Yes. Were you a Volga? I don't know, but I doubt it. Where did you get my neurochip? See, some things aren't quite explained. Like, a, a Mulga, she doesn't quite go into detail what it is. At least you believe there's something other going on. I found it in a cache underground. What cache? A long time ago, I hit a cache of toys in the ground. Because it totally makes sense, sense, you know? It makes total sense. Looks that way, but I don't remember any of it. My name is Enabish, I think. And you are? What do you want? I want to know what's going on here. You're not a Mulga. I'm Mongolian. I don't know what a Mulga is. Can you explain? Someone who kidnaps people and sells their substance. I lied. No, she does actually go into a little bit of detail. Um, you learn more once you get to the first sort of uh, puzzle as well. Where they kind of go into this thing about the substance. And you're going to find out what a bit more. And it's kind of weird the way this world's been built. What substance? I don't understand. My name is Eva. And I understand even less than you do. I do not recognize this body. There's something wrong with it. I can't see anything and I don't feel my legs. What's wrong with my legs? They're, um, fused together. Kind of like a vase. What? It's like you've got a flower yeah, vase flower where your legs should, legs should be. be. That's ridiculous. I'm scared. Calm down, Eva. Tell me, are you a robot? I'm a human being. In an artificial body. You mean you've had your body replaced? Half of humanity had their bodies replaced. Where did you get my neurochip? Ida, I've just now found it in an old cache. The cache you made when you were a child? Yes, if my journal is to be trusted. How could my neurochip have ended up in the hands of a child? Longots brought it. My father's trained golden eagle. I don't know where he had found it. How long ago was that? Long. 18 years ago. Listen, Inibish. I feel ill at ease here and scared. I want to remember who I am and return home. Please help me. See, like, at this point, you're like, long, 18 years ago. It's like, well, what happened between those 18 years ago? You do get treacles here and there, like, leading to the lore of what actually has happened in this world. I want the same thing. How can I help? 
You need to call the evacuators. They'll come and take me away. I've been trying to send a request, but it's useless. My marker isn't answering. So what do we do? I don't know. We might be able to use my neurocopy number, but I don't remember it. I remember almost nothing about myself. Just like me. Well, at least you're in your home. You know about your childhood, your family. I'm not sure if I'm home. I don't know this place. Strange. Listen, why don't you start asking me questions? Anything you wish to know. Maybe that will help sort my memories. Maybe I'll even remember the number. Are you all right? I feel something is wrong with this body. I can't. Tell me about artificial bodies. About bodies? All right. They are called M bodies. Hold on. Why replace people's bodies? Now, this is because actually going to tell you the sort of story of why they replaced the bodies. You can skip ahead. It'll be a few minutes after this sort of initial area where we'll jump into the quest. I was going to kind of cut forward, but this tells you like the initial part of what's going on in this game, or what like the story is going on. Kind of like a personal refuge. Right, a temporary refuge. People use it to hide from decrepitude. Once the virus is cured, we'll be able to return to our regular bodies. The virus could be gone by now. It's been years. I don't know. It was just so... No treatment worked. Not antibiotics, nothing. There was only one substance capable of destroying the virus. Passium. But the accumulation process was extremely slow. How was it accumulated? It was extracted from people themselves. Human beings produced it with their nervous system. Nervous system? I don't get it. Well, passium can only be extracted from emotions. Whenever you experience an emotion, any emotion, your M body manufactures a little bit of the substance. See, you see, it's like literally it was human emotions that made this substance possible. But then again, it's really kind of difficult to a extract. Produced by emotions? Yes. Emotions were the only thing capable of making a remedy against the virus. As a result, passing skyrocketed in value. Everybody became a source of value? Yes, although... There were people whose substance was considered more valuable than that of others. Who were those people? People that were special, somehow. They had something. They were greatly respected, but I can't remember. Can I help you somehow? I need a breathing module. Could you find it for me? Where do I look? We're in the middle of the step. The step and nothing else? Describe for me what's around here. The river, some abandoned complex. What kind of complex? A big dome with multicolored sails. Hold on. Yes. I must admit, the voice acting is actually really good, like it's subtle, but it's pure and clear and one of the it's really good and sort of the interaction here is really nice. And you see her eyes just kind of rolling around, it's just like, you know, thinking. It looks the part. M body parts were stored there, in the pavilions. Alright, I'll try. Find the seventh pavilion. I'll try to find the password to the file database, it may contain my data. If I remember anything, I'll contact you. All right. So now we are off to the big pavilion area, which is, it's almost like a fun park in a sense. But yes, we're off to here, um, new tasks added, which get to closure. I like how the text is just really nicely, but it is up there, which I might prefer it down the sort of right hand corner, maybe. It um, doesn't seem to be an option to change that, but some people might like it, some people might not. There is a lot in this game where it's going to be, a, I like this, I don't like that, I like this, I don't like that. It, it kind of is up to yourself if you're going to like this. So we have to find a way in, and there is a, some trees kind of build up there. And also I'm going to, it's just the music is so good. And some random balloons. So we're going to go in here and then I'll round off the video with a little quick bit in the actual area where we do our first quest, adventure, puzzle type thing. It's a bit of a weird one the way it's done, but uh, it's, it's kind of cool. It does take a quite a wee bit, so I won't be showing you to completion, but it's pretty darn cool. And you do get the breathing module after it. 
Anyway, let's say uh, go up here. I also notice when you jump, there almost is like a I'd say an anti-gravity. Like if I jump here, it seems to be ha like higher. Don't know if it's just me or I'm clearly missing something. It just seems to be almost anti-gravity. Like, and if you're heading into this really broken, abandoned area, and there's some cubes lying around, there is actually these cubes are partially in the tutorial and they've got something to do with some of the puzzles you'll come across anyway we have to got to hide in here and you to look for the the way it kind of works is you by product of eliminations like right what they do what they seven 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 i remembered who those people were the ones whose passing was regarded as more valuable it was their genes that made them special their dna had fewer errors in other words these were people with good heredity such people produce a special kind of passion, which contains a valuable component. It was this component that was needed to fight the virus and not the whole substance. That was why they commanded such respect. Humanity's struggle against the virus hinged on them. Back then, everybody used to say that the emotions of beautiful people were our salvation. So, I know where number seven is. It's up here, because some of them are down here, and some of them you have to actually use this cool little elevator. So, let's get up here. And, like I said, the game looks so good. So, so good. Anyway, we're heading up in here. You're at the location. Hold on. I'll try to open the door. Now, you go in here and it, you would think it's an elevator, but it's kind of sealed. And then you just can't fall asleep, almost. Because the screen does go blank. And it does take a wee bit to load. That is probably, literally, my only nitpick of the game. Is sometimes the loading screens can be a bit long. But there doesn't seem to be many of them, so it kind of balances itself out. But the loading scene, you, you had one there before where I was talking quite a lot, though, to kind of tell you a bit about the game. But it does kind of take a little bit long, and I would like that to be kind of fixed. Maybe not fixed, but sped up in a way. Um, maybe people with an SSD probably get better quicker. So what I'll do is I'll skip forward until we get to the point of the actual puzzle. Alright guys, we are at the puzzle. And here we go. So the music is awesome. So we get to get that breathing little apparatus there. And to do that, we have to uh, do this idea down here. Uh, why did I even say idea? I mean, we have to do this puzzle. So you got to collect 30 blue cubes. Hurl the cubes into the uprising stream. Hold the right mouse button if you have more. Don't fall into water. Reduce your score. I kept doing this. Like, you will find it difficult. Um, create platforms with valuable cubes are hidden in those. Apply blue, cu blue cubes to white ones to create a platform. Right click to delete. So, yellow ones are kind of pointless. Blue ones, do we have any blue ones? Do we have any blue ones? Let's go. And you can actually just right click and just go. It's so cool. It's good. Blue ones over here and we have a, you know, we have a inventory. And then we grab this and you can bring it over here. Shoving the white ones, and then you get a couple more. Uh, do we have any more white? Have we got some blue? Now, you may be wondering, right, okay, is there any enemies in the game? Yes, there is. There's a big red creature thing that comes out of this eventually. Oh, there he is. Oh, no. And you can fling this at him. Uh, but he explodes everything, so keep that in mind. But if he does explode next to you, it turns this into a red stream, and ever it sucks down all the sort of spare cubes. No, don't fall down. You can float back up. I don't have any score right now, so I'm going to wait. Um, we put that there. I'm going to wait for that to start. Oh, oh well. I don't have a score right now, so we'll just float back up. And this is kind of the idea of the puzzles. And quite, you know, they're different in the sense, and it seems to involve cubes. But let's do this. And down in the left hand corner you'll see our little dial and we have to fill that up and you get the breathing apparatus. Anyway guys, I have kept you quite enough. Oh dear, hi. And you can actually, you know, build your little bridge if you want. But guys, I've kept you long enough. Thank you again for checking out the Smash Look of Cradle. The link will be down below. It is fairly awesome. It looks freaking cool. And there is a lot in it and there's an amazing world to explore. Go see! Anyways, thank you again for watching and I shall see you all next time.